Hey everybody, Chris the Old Ass Retro Gamer here. Today I'm back with a sequel to an episode that is probably one of my favorite of all the ones I've released. And that is my top five retro games based on movies. I am a filmmaker, I love film, I love everything about them. And one aspect of film that is usually looked down upon are the video games that are based on movies. Yes, there's always a video game tie-in to popular movies. Actually, it hasn't been a big thing for the current generation, but in the past, oh yeah. Most of the time, they were looked upon as being kind of trash. But I tend to not agree with that a lot of the time. Don't ask me why. Yeah, a lot of them are pretty bad, but I enjoy them for their badness. Kind of like I enjoy a good B-movie. So I want to shed some light on some titles that I would feel are not terrible at all. Are actually very fun and usually overlooked. And just like in the last video, I have a little help this time. I have not one special guest. I have ten. Jazz hands. Because I'm such a huge fan of movies, I felt the need to get as many of my favorite YouTube personalities involved in this video so we can all share our favorite games based on movies. There are some returning gamers, as well as a slew of new ones to this channel. Not only do I have Nintendo returning, who I did the original top five video games based on movies video with, but Church the Game Grinder, John Riggs of Rigged Games, Playongo, RGT85, Dragoon Loggy, Power Metal Gamer, Shelton of Retro Games Vinyl and Beer, Radical Reggie, and Joel from Media Glitch. This is probably my biggest video to date and I'm super excited about it. So let's get started. I'm going to show off five more of my favorite games that are based on movies with all of the guests interspersed in between. So before I share my first selection, let's hear from Nintendo and the Game Grinder. What's up guys, Nintendo here and I'm just doing a quick segment for my buddy the old ass retro gamer who asked me, what is your favorite movie licensed video game? Which I was immediately going to answer with Batman on the NES. Uh, which is a great game. Uh, very good music, awesome graphics, really love Batman. It's probably my old favorite. Um, but I have a newer favorite. I have a game that I didn't really know about probably until about a year ago, and I got it maybe a few months later, and that is Gremlins 2 for the NES. A very, very fun overhead uh, kind of adventure action game. Um, it's really fun. You can actually jump. Even though it's an overhead adventure, you can actually jump, and you can actually move in all eight directions and you have projectile weapons and what's really cool is there's a shop available so you can actually upgrade your weapons upgrade your health unfortunately i think you can only do like one thing at a time and then the shop's closed and then you can't go to it till the next level but overall this game is incredible uh, it's got really nice graphics the gameplay is very very fun the learning curve is not too steep it's not like a ninja guide where it's immediately just hard as hell after only like the second level it's actually fairly decently uh, easy to play until probably, it seemed like I was about on the fourth world or something like that. Uh, it was like level 4-2 or something like that that I started getting into some trouble. But um, I was actually pretty good at this game. I was surprised. But it's made by Sunsoft. The same people who made Batman and uh, Batman Return of the Joker, I believe, also. But uh, yeah, Gremlins 2 is a very good game and it seems like nobody really talked about it until recently. These days it's gotten a little bit more attention, but it's still a reasonable price. Um, I got mine for, well, I got mine for free, but the guy that got it for me, uh, my buddy Kevin got it for me as a present, and I think he paid, like, 15 shipped for it, and I don't think it's more than 20 bucks right now, I haven't checked in a while, but Gremlins 2, amazing game, uh, old-ass retro gamer, you rule, thanks for having me do this, and, uh, yeah, everybody, go play Gremlins 2, and... While you're at it, go check out Nintendo. They have an awesome channel. I do all kinds of stuff. Pick up videos and reviews occasionally and all kinds of good stuff. But uh, yeah, walk away knowing that Gremlins 2 is a worthy purchase, especially for under 20 bucks. So yeah, that's all I have for you guys. Thank you for watching. Keep rocking the retro games. Church here of The Game Grinder, and thanks for having me on again, Chris. Last time I was here, we talked about films based on video games, and of course, this time we were talking about games based on film. I'm actually going to be talking about two different games, and actually two different versions of two different games, so if you can guess what they are, plus one internet to you. So the first game here is going to be The Lion King for the Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis. Now, these were both developed by Westwood Studios, who later went on to develop the Command & Conquer series, which I think is pretty dang interesting. And regardless of which version you play, you're going to be getting 
getting pretty much the exact same experience. Although I will give the Super Nintendo one the extra bump just because of the sound. But you don't really need to be a fan of the films to be a fan of the games as long as you enjoy solid platformers. And surprisingly enough, that's exactly what these games are, solid platformers. Now switching up that formula just a little bit is going to be Disney's Aladdin for the Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis. Now unlike The Lion King, these were actually developed by two different developers. The Super Nintendo was developed by Capcom, led by director Shinji Mikami, who later went on to direct the Resident Evil series, and the Sega Genesis version was developed by Virgin, along with collaboration of Disney. Now if I was to recommend either one of these games, it'd probably be the Sega Genesis version just for that Disney collaboration. The character sprites and animations just look that much better with their involvement. But regardless, either game you go with, uh, you're going to get another solid platformer, and you don't need to know the films as, of course, they will fill you in on stories of the films as you play through the games. And then I'd like to just give a little honorable mention to The Jungle Book. Very similar experience, and again, just kind of a solid platformer. So now you know if anybody asks, are there any good video games based on films, you have two serious contenders to go with. Great selections from both of you. I give you my thumbs up. My first selection for a video game based on a movie that doesn't suck is for the Sega Genesis, and is based on a very popular movie from the mid-1990s, True Lies. This is also available for the Super Nintendo, which is actually my preferred version of the game. I just don't own it yet, but each game is exactly the same, just with the Super Nintendo having better graphics and sound. True Lies is extremely fun. It is a top-down action shooter, kind of like Akari Warriors, except you're going through buildings and whatnot. You play as Arnold Schwarzenegger's Harry Tasker character as he goes on different missions that are right out of the movie. In the beginning, you're in that mountain chalet trying to take out terrorists. You go through the mall, you're on the docks, and it all culminates in the big Harrier action scene from the finale of the film. While the graphics are nothing special, it's the gameplay that's fun, and it is a very, very tense, very hard shooter. Shooter. It follows the plot of the movie very well. You even have a little Tom Arnold talking to you at the bottom of the screen to tell you your mission objectives. Not a whole lot of enemy types to fight, but for what it is, it is very fun. It was one of those games that I picked up back in the day based on the name recognition alone, and I ended up enjoying the shit out of it. I remember telling all my friends, hey, if you get a chance and you're looking for a new game to play that's really fun, check out that new True Lies game. And everyone would be like, yeah, right, like that Terminator 2 game that came out a couple years ago was any good. I'm not going to trust another Schwarzenegger-based game. Well, you'd be doing yourself a disservice because True Lies is actually one of the best undiscovered movie tie-in games ever released as far as I'm concerned. It will get your blood boiling at certain points because it is so frustratingly hard, but it is extremely enjoyable and not a waste of cartridge space. So now let's hear from John Riggs of Rigged Games and Play On Go. How's that for the opening shot? What's, what's going on? How are you feeling? John Riggs here, and thanks for uh, thanks for having me, man. Um, talk about games that are good based on movies is a such a narrow list because there are this many games, and then this many games based on movies, and then this many games based on movies that are good. You can barely see through it. Uh, not a whole lot of them so far. The games on the list are very very good, and, uh, and I would agree with all of them. One game. That doesn't get enough love, as far as I'm concerned, because it gets overshadowed by the better Genesis version, is Jurassic Park for the Sega CD. Never mind this broken part. These uh, these cases are made out of the most breakable material ever. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't get a lot of love. In fact, a lot of people who play this don't really care for it. I think they're expecting that Genesis version, and the Super Nintendo version ain't bad. I prefer the Genesis version first for Jurassic Park, but I love this one because it has like the interactive cutscenes. It had like full motion video and like audio and stuff like that because it was a Sega CD game. That's what Sega CD games were. You could learn a little bit more about uh, dinosaurs along the way, and it played very much so like a point and click adventure style game. Um, the first time I played the game, when you went up the stairs, like you're in the museum or whatever, um, you're in the lot, wherever that place was, the lobby or something, um, and then you went up the stairs and actually scrolled up the stairs like in a video pattern like I love that thing so um, if I had to choose one to add to the list just because it doesn't get enough love the Genesis version is great but I gotta show some love for uh, for my Sega CD here so Jurassic Park for Sega CD a game based on a movie that's actually pretty decent that's my pick hi uh, let me thank Chris the old ass retro gamer for inviting me on to talk about our favorite video games based on movies I'm going ahead and including animated movies, being uh, who I am, uh, and my pick is Ghost in the Shell. Let's take a look. 
So this is Ghost in the Shell on the PlayStation 1, itself based on the animated movie of the same name from 1995. This game was released around 1996. Uh, it features animation from the studio that actually did the theatrical man animation, including the same voice cast that did the English dub. Uh, here you can see that the gameplay is sort of a third-person mech uh, action game uh, with this very, very cool uh, wall-crawling mechanic. Uh, it can be a little bit disorienting, but I think uh, it really shows what you can do with 3D gaming at the time. Uh, it's very old-school and very arcadey in the sense that you're, you're picking up um, like extra bombs, you're, you're picking up your life um, from little health packs scattered around the levels. Uh, each of the levels is different and each one has its own uh, unique uh, goals and sort of style to it. Some of the levels uh, require you to you know go around and uh, go to certain places and then you typically end up fighting a boss at the end. Uh, sometimes you have some uh, stages that are on rails, some of them are really wide open as you can see some of them are claustrophobic and uh, the, just the presentation everything about this game is really fantastic. The music is wonderful, uh, has a very interesting, almost like minimalistic soundtrack. Uh, the game isn't particularly long, but if you like arcade style uh, 3D action games, you can't go wrong with this. So I hope that was enjoyable. My channel is PlayOnGo, and I cover uh, a lot of Japanese developed and uh, you know, Japanese games that were never released uh, in the West. Uh, I really like to do pickups videos and uh, a lot of different things, some reviews. Uh, gameplay videos, um, I'm dabbling in some let's plays and things of that sort. So uh, if you're into obscure video game systems or Japanese only games or you know games that are coming out here that are Japanese developed, um, then I would encourage you to uh, check out my channel and uh, thanks again. Once again, great choices by both of my guests. So my next selection of a video game based on a movie that doesn't suck, Batman for the PC Engine. Chris, is that a port of the NES game? No. Is that a port of the Sega Genesis game? No. It is a maze-style Pac-Man game. What? Wait, 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 hear me out. Due to some weird legal snafu, Sunsoft was not allowed to release this game in the US. It stayed in Japan for the PC Engine. We never got a TurboGrafx-16 port, uh, which is sad because this one is extremely fun, and the reason I like it so much is because it is so different from the other Batman games that we got at the time, based on Tim Burton's original Batman movie. You control Batman as he goes through all these different mazes. There's enemies that you have to fight. All you really have to do is pick up all these different items on each stage to move on to the next one. And some of them are power-ups. Your main weapon is a Batarang, and some of the power-ups will allow you to throw them further. Others will allow you to throw more of them at the same time. Some will allow you to move faster. And you defeat your enemies by hitting them with the Batarang. It stuns them, and you have to touch them in order to beat them. Which is kind of like Pac-Man with the power pellet situation. And once you get past the fact that you're not playing a side-scrolling beat-em-up with Batman, you'll realize that it is a very fun game with great graphics, awesome music, there is a rendition of the Stage 1 music from the NES game in here, which is rad as all hell. So I highly recommend that if you can pick up a copy of it, do so, because you will not be disappointed. So now let's hear from Retro Gaming Tube 85 and Dragoon Loggy. What's up? I'm RGT85. Hopefully you've heard of me. And today I'm going to talk about a game that was based on a movie that I really enjoy. It's very loosely based on the movie, pretty much only in the main character, kind of the story, and of course the artwork. But that game is Die Hard Arcade on the Sega Saturn. Um, this game was also released in the arcade. That was actually my first experience with the game. Um, I remember my parents were looking at a timeshare in Florida and they had an arcade there and the guy gave me a thing of coins and was like, just go play in the arcade while I talk to your parents and try to take money from them. And they had a copy of Die Hard Arcade and I was so in love with that game. And the Sega Saturn version is really, really good. You play as John McClane um, or a, uh, another woman that's a two-player game and it's a real beat-em-up you know it's a beat-em-up uh, of a genre that has long been gone uh, 3d polygon sort of a 2d plane but you can move you know back and forth in the environments you're kind of in predetermined environments and it's just a really fun game it has that old school Sega flair and it's just such it's such a well done game and it's a shame that you know, people don't really talk about that game much. You hear about it, but you don't really hear people talk about it. And in my opinion, it's one of the best games 
on the Sega Saturn. It's the one I always seem to go back to. It's one that I play a lot of the time. And it's just one that's really well done. Um, it is a bit pricey right now. It's about $60 complete, if not a little more. But if you could find a copy, you know, even if it's disc only, I highly suggest you pick it up because although it only really shares the Die Hard name, it does have a Die Hard feel to it. And you do sort of feel like John McClane. Plus, it's way better than that NES Die Hard game. That thing was ugh, terrible. But yeah, Die Hard Arcade on the Saturn, definitely one of my favorite games. Hi guys, I have to do a video for the old ash retro gamer. I have to introduce myself. First of all, I was born in the 80s, so I have played tons and tons of 80s and 90s games, of course newer ones. I love RPGs, GRPGs, Western RPGs, uh, I love survival horror, I love um, Adventure games, point and click adventures. I am collecting PlayStation games, uh, Sega Saturn games. I'm a big Sega Saturn lover. Uh, yeah, the Panzer Dragon Sega is my favorite. That's all about what is my channel is about. But for my favorite game, or based on a movie, that's Evil Dead: Hail to the King of the PlayStation. Maybe a weird choice because it's not a very, very uh, loved game because it has uh, bugs and yeah, it's not a very hard game. Also, but as when I, young, as when I was young, I loved this game. So much I I uh, finish it, but uh, if I play it now I can. But yeah, very fond memories of it. So I choose Evil Dead: Hail to the King. Also, I love the movies by the way. But uh, for the fact, I saw them after the game. So years after the game, <laughs> I was not really in the movie. Uh, I didn't like really really horror movies, but now I love them. So I hope you enjoy the old S retro gamer channel. So. I see you and maybe to my channel. Bye! Both of those selections are fantastic. I own both of them. Die Hard Arcade is a little bit pricey, but it's well worth it. And Evil Dead does not get any respect at all. You are right. So what's my next choice for an awesome video game based on a movie? Indiana Jones' Greatest Adventures. This has adaptations of the original trilogy of Indiana Jones films, Raiders of the Lost Ark, The Temple of Doom, and The Last Crusade. And basically, if you've played any of the Super Star Wars games, you've played this, except instead of having lightsabers and blasters, you have a whip and your fists. Factor 5 developed this awesome game that is a platformer with other vehicle type levels dispersed within. You get to use the whip as in Castlevania 4 where you can attach it to things and swing on it like a rope. All the major scenes are recreated from the movies like the boulder chase from Raiders of the Lost Ark, the minecart chase from Temple of Doom, and the fight on top of the tank from The Last Crusade. And just like Super Star Wars, there are some liberties taken like when was there a huge fight scene as the Ark was opened in Raiders of the Lost Ark where you have to beat the living crap out of Belloc? I don't know, but it's in here. The graphics are amazing. They're colorful, rich, detailed. Lots of awesome sound effects that are taken right out of the movie, especially Harrison Ford's little when he gets hit. The music are these great 16-bit renditions of the John Williams score, and it feels like an Indiana Jones game, which is something that the Raiders of the Lost Ark game for the Atari 2600 and the Indiana Jones games that came out for the NES could not deliver. Sure, there were some really good ones that came down the line, but at this point in time when this was released, this was a revelation. You can't go wrong with this one. So now let's hear from Power Metal Gamer and Shelton from Retro Games Vinyl and Beer. Hey guys, Power Metal Gamer here from the Emerald Isle of Ireland where leprechauns hide shit on the rainbows and alcoholics love their beer. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for having me on the show, Chris. Very happy to help. And today you have asked us a question, what our favorite games are based off movies. And as a fan of movies and video games, and a fan of Batman in particular, my favorite one would have to be from a nostalgic roller coaster ride, which is Batman Returns on the Super Nintendo. Now, there were so many different versions of th th this game that came out. There was the Sega Mega Drive version, there was the Atari Lynx, and there's a Mega CD version, which were completely, completely different to this game. Like, the Mega Drive version was a side-scroller, it was kind of like the Batman on the NES. The one on the Mega CD was kind of like you race with the Batmobile and you kind of take down all gangs and shit like that. So, this one plays a lot like uh, Final Fight, which Konami were kind of known for back in the 90s with their beat ups like Turtles in Time, Simpsons Arcade. Man, there was a lot of awesome games that the Konami did back in the day. It really does follow the movie. 
Uh, in level one, you fight against all the the red triangle, the circus gang, you know, all the clowns and shit, and the fat clowns, the small clowns. There's the clown with the rocket launcher, and you fight all the different bosses throughout. Like the first boss, the guy with the taser that has Selena Coyle, which becomes Catwoman. The Catwoman fighting this on the building is actually awesome. You can see Penguin in it, and he's he's in his little rubber ducky. And then I think it was Mission Five, where you're you're, you're like in a, in a chase scene. And there's loads of bikers on bikes and stuff like that. This game absolutely kicked so much ass. Uh, it's a single player beat em up though, which is the kind of bad thing. Well, there was no really robbing around at the time. But the game absolutely plays incredibly well. The hit detection, the, the combat, you can grab your enemies, you can smash them into the walls, you can fucking slam dunk them on the ground, you can grab two enemies together and crack their heads. And Man, the game is awesome. Definitely my favorite game. It's the most nostalgic one, uh, Batman movie game. There was also another Batman game, which I'm not going to really talk about much. It was Batman Begins on the PlayStation 2, and I think it was released on the GameCube and the original Xbox. It was kind of like a Splinter Cell kind of game. Batman Returns is my choice, and thank you for having me on the show, Chris. But anyways, guys, this is Power Metal Gamer out. Keep the power. Hey, this is Shelton with a YouTube channel called Retro Games Vinyl and Beer, where I talk about old video games and craft beer. And my favorite video game based on a movie would be Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. This game, it is based on a movie that's based on a graphic novel, and it's a really good beat-em-up. It was a downloadable title released on the PS3 and Xbox 360 back in 2010, and it kind of plays like River City Ransom on the NES. Basically, you're going through the levels and beating people up, and you have the seven evil exes you need to defeat to win the game. It's really cool though because you can do four players on it as well, and it's just a really fun multiplayer experience. Also, the graphical style on the game is really awesome. It's very reminiscent of an old NES game. And I feel that this game kind of started the resurgence of the retro indie titles. I don't think games like Axiom Verge and Shovel Knight would be as popular if it wasn't for this game. So uh, that's really cool, it kind of started that trend. Another good thing is it has a really great soundtrack. Honestly, one of my favorite video game soundtracks of all time. And it follows the story of the movie really well too, so definitely got to give it some props for that. The only real bummer about the game is unfortunately since it is a downloadable title, it was actually taken off the PlayStation and Xbox store due to licensing issues. And there's not a physical copy out there, so unfortunately there's not really a way to download it right now. It does have a pretty huge cult following, so I'm hoping maybe in the future they'll be able to re-release that. I know it was put out by Ubisoft, and I know they love money, so hopefully they hop on that and put it on PS4 eventually. And those are my thoughts on Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, the game. It's a really awesome beat-em-up, and I definitely recommend you check it out if you can. Yet again, two great choices. So my next selection of a video game based on a movie that doesn't suck, A Nightmare on Elm Street, developed by Rare, which is one of my all-time favorite game developers and was released by LJN. You play as one of the Elm Street kids. You have to go to all these different locations on Elm Street, like the junkyard and the high school and a few houses to collect Freddy's bones. And every time you collect Freddy's bones in a specific location, you fight a boss. And once you have all of the bones, you will end up fighting Freddy Krueger, and you have to defeat him and then burn his remains. God damn, does Freddy have a lot of femur bones? And it has all of those awesome, rare touches in it. The music by David Wise, fantastic and moody and extremely catchy. Very well animated graphics that are very colorful. Some very cool gameplay tweaks, like the fact that you can go into the dream realm as well as play in reality. You have different power-ups that you can only use in the Dream Realm, which is amazing, which ties into Nightmare on Elm Street 3 Dream Warriors with the powers that the characters had while they were in their dreams. All the different forms that Freddy takes on when you fight him as bosses, which are taken right out of the films. Sure, I don't remember there being Frankenstein zombies and bats and giant snakes and rats all over the place, but like I said, you need to take liberties when it comes to games like this back in the day in order to have things to do and fight. The platforming is solid, even though the controls can be a little bit floaty when you're jumping. I hate the fact that the enemies push you when they hit you, like in the Castlevania games, and that will lead to a lot of really cheap deaths. 
And the one thing that really bugs me is the fact that the enemies will respawn when you go a pixel off the screen to where they are supposed to pop up originally. And they will just keep appearing multiple times until they swarm you and you die. It takes enough from the movies to make it really enjoyable, especially if you're a fan of the movie series like I am. Regardless of some control issues, it is a supremely entertaining game that I play a lot. Out of all of my Nintendo games, this is one of the ones that I pop in the most. And on top of that, if you had the NES satellite, you could play four players at the same time. I have never done that, and I can imagine what a kind of chaos would ensue if I did. But this is a game that gets no love, basically because of the company that released it. If you look past that, you'll see that it is a very well-designed game that is fun, it is challenging, and is awesome. So now let's hear from my final two guests, Radical Reggie and Joel from Media Glitch. Hey, Chris, man. Thanks for having me on the, on the channel, man. I really appreciate it, man. And the game I'm going to talk about briefly is Die Hard Arcade. But I know it's already been done by Sean, but this is Die Hard Arcade PS2 upgraded version. Now, what this has in it is, of course, you have the updated graphics. It also has the Sega Saturn mode. So if any of you guys are feeling nostalgic and want to play the old Saturn version, you can go ahead and choose that right from the beginning. It also comes with a easy mode but I'm not really sure exactly what the easy mode does I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm guessing that maybe enemies are easier or maybe it's infinity continues which is cool it also comes with that mode where you get uh, credits I forgot it was the mode where you're you're on the ship and you're dropping bombs in the sea trying to kill some stuff I can't really remember it has that mode as well too uh, the only thing is uh, even though it's uh, in Japanese uh, everything's in English but uh, when you do the quick time events, you don't know which button to push sometimes. So I guess that kind of makes it a little bit thrilling sometimes. Like you don't know if you're going to hit the guy or not, or you're going to get attacked. So, which is pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, this is awesome. A movie based game. Seriously. I mean, Die Hard Arcade is one of the best uh, beat em ups I've ever played. And it will, it will be close to what you would call a realistic beat em up because as you go through the game, uh, you're getting tore up, like even though you're not losing power, I mean clothes are getting damaged, you know, you're, you're, you're running around your bare feet, you know, you're trying to survive, pick up weapons, it's pretty brutal, so awesome game, uh, I recommend it, you can't get the PS2 version, that's okay, uh, get the Saturn version, you know, I don't know what it goes for, but still, you know, it's an excellent game, an excellent movie game that you must, uh, must have in your collection. Hey guys, Joel Valley from Media Glitch here, and I'm here to talk to you about my favorite movie to video game, and that is Friday the 13th on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Now this game gets a bad rap. A lot of people don't like it because it was published by LJN, but what they don't know is that it was developed by Atlas. Yes, Atlas. Atlas who brings us beautiful and awesome and cool games, and this is one of them. Now let me tell you why. First of all, I used to rent this game every weekend because I had to beat Jason. I had to figure out how that was done, okay? And I would love the music. I love being in the land of Camp Camp Crystal Lake. I love uh, seeing Jason in his 8-bit form. I love the music of the game. I love the, the sound that it makes when Jason comes on the scene. I love fighting him. I love everything about this game. And now, a lot of people just don't know how to play this game. And just because you don't know how to play a game doesn't make it a bad game. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a couple tips that are going to help you to kind of get started in this game. One, the torch is the best weapon. Two, Mark and Chrissy are the only counselor that are worth anything in this game. Uh, one, another one <laughs> is that Jason's patterns are not random and uh, you have to have at least one kid alive and you have to beat Jason three times. And so that is a good starting point for you to enter into this game. Okay, don't hate on it just because everyone else is hating on it. Make up your own mind, man. This is a beautiful game. You need to check it out. Don't let it pass you by. And I love you, Atlas. Peace, I'm out. God damn it, Joel. That mic drop gets me every time I watch it. My number one game, based on a movie that doesn't completely suck, let's go old school. I'm talking the Atari 2600, people. Yes, there were licensed games all the way back in the early 80s for the Atari 2600, and there is one that is quite possibly the most infamous of them all. So what is my choice? Crawl. I hear some of you saying, what the hell is Crawl? Crawl was a fantasy movie that came out in, I do believe, 1983. I saw it in the drive-in when I was a kid, and I loved it. It's a fantasy movie, it's very creative. It was originally supposed to be a Dungeons and Dragons movie, but the licensing for that fell through, so it got turned into this. Come on, it was one of Liam Neeson's first films. My traveling days are over, my friend. But I've always enjoyed the movie. 
And the game I did not know existed. My father ended up buying this for me for my birthday the year that it came out. And while it is the simplest of all the games I'm going to talk about today, or all of us are going to talk about today, it is super, super fun. It is a collection of four mini games. The first is defend the princess from the invading slayers as wave upon wave of soldiers comes down toward the bottom of the screen. You have to kill them as they come before they can kidnap the princess. It will happen eventually. Then there is a side-scrolling level where you are on horseback and you have to pick up a glaive that will randomly appear on the ground. The glaive is your main weapon. Next is the widow of the web scene where you have to climb from the bottom of the screen to the top to get to a little box where you will find out where you need to go for the final confrontation and you have to avoid these webs that will push you out of the way as well as a spider that is there to attack you. Once you see where you need to go in the web to go to the final level, you will have another one of those horseback levels. And then it's to the final confrontation with the beast where you have to basically avoid him and chip away at the barrier to release the princess, which is kind of like a vertical version of Yar's Revenge. And once you free the princess and kill the beast, it starts all over again just at a harder difficulty. But even though it is very simple, like I said earlier, it is very, very fun. Each of the four mini games is very well designed, fun to play. I'm sure the graphics aren't impressive and the sound is kind of grating at times, but those were Atari 2600 games for you. If you're a collector for the Atari 2600, I highly recommend you pick up a copy of Kroll. It is one of my all-time favorite games, as well as one of my favorite games based on a film. So I want to thank each and every one of my guests. Nintendo, The Game Grinder, John Riggs, Play On Go, RGT85, Dragoon Loggy, Power Metal Gamer, Sheldon from Retro Games, Vinyl and Beer, Radical Reggie, and Joel from Media Glitch. Thank you so much for participating in this collaboration video. I appreciate the fact that each and every one of you took time out of your schedules to film a short little video for me on this topic. It means a lot. And... Every day I grow to appreciate the YouTube gamer community more and more. Everyone is so nice and so friendly and just willing to collaborate. You guys and girls are awesome in my book. Old ass retro gamer seal of approval. So I'll put the links to all of my guests' channels in the description below. Please check them out and subscribe because they are all amazing. And while you're at it, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, why don't you just hit that little red button right now? Click. And please share the link to this video on the social media. If you enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up and leave any and all comments in the section below. What are some of your favorite games that are based on movies that don't suck? That just get a lot of crap just because they are based on a movie that might be bad, might not be bad. Everyone talked crap about it back in the day. Turns out it's actually not as bad as it was made out to be. I definitely want to hear what your suggestions are as well. Because maybe there's some that I haven't found that I need to add to my collection and only you can tell me about them. I have actually made it a point to collect as many games based on movies as I possibly can. It's crazy, but it's just something I do. Don't judge me. So until next time, I am Chris, the old-ass retro gamer, signing off.